Hello, welcome to Feed Me More Fitness Rebuilding Ryback. I am the big guy Ryback. And this week we're back at Filthy Power Gym. And I am here with the man, Stan Efferding, the white rhino. Yeah, thank you, brother. Leg workout today. Yes, you know a thing or two about powerlifting, bodybuilding, the strongest powerlifter, or bodybuilder, sorry, correct? Yeah, we're the strongest pro bodybuilder still until Larry, Larry Wheels gets a pro card. Yeah, I think you're, you're doing all right, though. Yeah, yeah. And uh, creator of the Vertical Diet, which I am currently putting into my diet, which has helped me get back up to 300 pounds. So. Yeah, makes the stomach feel good. Yes, good. We're, we're gonna do legs today though. I'm essentially with this with everybody, we're documenting my journey, getting myself back into shape to eventually return to pro wrestling, hopefully here for 2020. Uh, and I have found for me, Stan, is letting go of my ego and putting myself around now that I'm physically healthy again. And I think this just applies in all areas of life, letting go of the ego, the past is the past, and putting yourself around people that truly understand and are doing what you want to do that are, they have gotten the results already and have the history and the experience. And you're one of those guys. So I want to put myself around you and go through one of your leg workouts and see if I can start getting back what I used to have. Yeah. And you know, we're not here to break you. That, that's not the goal. The goal is, is you first, you had to get healthy. Yes. So that then we can now get you fit. And fitness is the ability to perform a particular duty or task in your sport in wrestling. You're going to have to be able to handle people. You need a lot of core strength. Yes. You need to, be able to handle a lot of load. And so now we're going to graduate from a lot of the isolation exercises that you've done historically yep. because you were nursing injuries. We're going to try to put a little load on you uh, and see if we can start to create that, that, uh, that core strength and just get you more powerful overall. And also, as we discussed, I think it's also really important, uh, whether you're bodybuilding or powerlifting, to have some sort of axial loading because it's going to create strength from traps to toes uh, and get that core strong. And the core isn't just you know the abs; it's also the obliques and the, the lumbar spine and your your lats. All of that gets incorporated into the movement. So we'll start gradually loading you today without you know exposing you to injury. That's not the goal here. And so we've already you've already started working with the right technique, and we'll you know talk today about uh, how we're going to do that so that you can get the most benefit without injury we're not here to hurt anybody we're just Absolutely. creating the right stimulus we're not going zero to 100 zero to one is fine then one to two two to three yeah. and as long as there's some sort of progression over time and you're consistent then i think we'll get you right back uh, into where you're competing again and and you know with wrestling too the unique thing about it is um it's not uh the the conditioning aspect of pro wrestling it's not like a, a fight where you go out there and end it in five minutes necessarily if you can uh sometimes you have to go 20 25 30 minutes and as we know, being bigger, having more muscle, you consume more oxygen, takes, requires more oxygen. And I found for me, one of the most important things was having that power in the beginning of a match, but to be able to have that power at the end of a 20 minute match, having that conditioning as well in applying both that, that being as strong as possible, but also having as, as good of conditioning as possible. Yeah. And you know a thing or two about that as well. I've seen you keeping up with- Yeah, well, bodybuilding requires a lot of conditioning. You gotta do a lot of volume and then be yeah. able to recover very quickly because the more, uh, we call it the law of repeated bouts. The more frequency that you can put into your workouts, the more often you can train the body parts, uh, the more uh, sets and reps and volume that you can do, uh, then the more you're going to advance uh, over a shorter period of time. So there is a difference between muscular strength and muscular endurance. You need both. And so what I like to do is I include both into the training. I mentioned that uh, sometimes I'll do a heavy day and a light day. A light day is kind of a bad name for it. Uh, light day doesn't mean that you don't work hard, it just means that you're not loading as much weight. Today we might do 85% of one rep max for a couple sets of five. That might be all we need to create that, that top end strength for ourselves. And then we might finish with uh, say an AMRAP of a 20 rep set, and that'll give us some more muscular endurance. And then on the light day, I won't do any of the fives. It would create too much fatigue to try and do that twice a week. On the light day, I'll stay in the eight to 12 range. And again, I'll just probably shorten the rest periods. That'll give us the muscular endurance that will apply to when you're actually competing in, 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 in the ring. And then we'll finish again with AMRAPs. And so we do focus on cardiovascular fitness and strength. And we might break them into two separate uh, workouts to, to do more cardiovascular fitness on the light day. Today, we'll do a couple of heavy fives. We'll finish with some supersets for hamstrings and calves and we'll get our heart rate up and we'll shorten the rest periods for that. So we're gonna get all the benefit for the whole thing. Thing. Good deal. Well, I'm all yours today. We're doing your leg workout today, and let's do this. Hey, 
because I'm using the eyes to create balance. If I look straight ahead, I'm having a hard time yeah. you know, gauging balance for myself. You can lock in a little better. When I'm staring here, and then now I, I can easily, it's kind of like close your eyes and, and stand on one yeah. foot, as opposed to opening your eyes and standing on one foot. You have that pro yep. proprioception. Uh, the big thing for me is that I keep my ribs down because that allows me to shorten my abdominal yeah. uh, to stabilize my abdomen better. If you are chest up, that stretches your abdomen out. Uh, Hard to get as stable in the yeah. core here. So I go, huh, I do a little break at the hips and I lock everything down like football. Yeah. And when you stand there at the football line, you don't stand up. Nope. You stand down. You want and, to be locked in. And this comes down, this gets crunched. Now that's your power yeah. position. And from there, then you can just drop into the hole. Yep. And you're already, you know, tight. If Are you, you a little more forward on your squat too? A little more forward yeah. because I've got the low bar. Yep. You've got a higher bar, so yeah. you'll be a little more upright. But the big thing is, is that uh, when you're stable and you start to drop down into the hole like this, then the bar, your midsection, your core isn't weak. Yeah. A lot of people will stand straight up and down and then they'll break at the knees first yep. and they get a lot of this yeah. on the way down, particularly when the weight gets heavy. But if you load the glutes and contract the abs, ribs down, now you're just powerful. It's like a standing leg yeah. press. Nobody can break that. They call it like a, loading a spring. Yeah. And if, if that spring like, isn't loaded, then that's what happens. If this isn't strong, you'll start doing this. Yeah. And I, don't, I want to be stable yep. under the weight. I think this is you. So really the main thing I'm doing is by bringing the ribs down, it's just, it's just shortening the abdominals so I can be stronger in the core. thing is, is I probably wouldn't even squat 500 anymore except there's a 20 year old natural girl that squats 500 for reps Wow Amanda Lawrence yes she won the I think the world championships recently but I went out and trained with her some time back and that's the only, until as soon as I squat less than her I'm just quitting lifting all together <laughs> <laughs> the one thing with social media is it makes us all aware of how many strong people yeah, there are that's why I did the video it's... fuck Mike O'Hearn because it just makes you feel bad about yourself <laughs> You know? I look at fatigue, systemic fatigue, what they might call central nervous system, as a bucket. And once you've overfilled that bucket, then you might get into overreaching or overtraining. So, that's why I only did two top sets of heavy stuff. Now I'm gonna get into the 10s and 12s, get some more volume, which is gonna be great for hypertrophy. Yeah. You can build muscle just as easily or just as successfully doing sets of five or doing sets of eight to 12 yeah. or doing sets of 20, as long as you get to within a rep or two of failure. Fives are gonna get stronger. 10 to or eight to 12s are gonna build less fatigue than 20s or fives. Yes which I didn't used to think that. I thought 20s you'd build less fatigue because the weight was lighter. Yeah. But it turns out there's more systemic fatigue there. So I'm trying now not to fill my bucket up too full, but still get a good hypertrophy workout for my legs. That's why we're here. Yeah. You know, every set to count, we got our strength stuff in, we got our loading stuff in. Yes. We're gonna feel powerful under that. 
Now I just want to build muscle and look good. Yeah, yeah. And Which I, I said for wrestling too, is having that strength, but also the endurance yeah. as well. And it's kind of the best of both worlds, essentially. Yeah. Now this is far too light. To, to get enough, to, for a set to be effective, we're back to Dorian Yates' yes. type of, it's within a rep or two of failure. I don't care what the weight is. So that's really just a warm up. As long as I get to within a rep or two of failure, that's an effective set. If I do a set of 10 reps and I could have done 20, yeah. I wasted my time. So I'll call that a warm up. Next set I'll try and Anything stand with the leg extensions uh, going too heavy with knees? I've never had any knee, knee, knee issues, knock on wood. But I know some people have a theory we're going too heavy on that. What is your thoughts on that? They're not inherently any more dangerous than any other leg exercise when done properly. Okay. That having been said, a leg extension wouldn't be something that you would use for, for building strength. So when you say heavy, I'm still thinking 10 to 12 rep range. Yeah. There's no reason to do a leg extension for a set of five. Not at all. Get into the squat rack. Yep. But this is a great thing to, to build muscle, muscle, to add volume yes. to the exercise. So no, I don't think that they're inherently bad for the knees. If your knees hurt, then you want to avoid movements that Obviously, hurt. Yeah. But they're not bad. So Stan, I wanted to ask you to, um, me having my injuries at, at 34 and thinking it was game over and now, 38 feeling better than I felt in a long time. You're 52. I feel like with like guys like Nick Best, he's gotten better with age. What's your secret to continuously getting better as you've gotten older? Because that's kind of not the norm with most people. Well, I stopped wrecking myself in the gym. Stimulate, don't annihilate was the key thing. Just went in there and I found exercises that didn't hurt. When I was powerlifting, obviously you're stuck. You gotta bench squat and deadlift. I also did more outside the gym than most people. Mostly mobility stuff, I just moved a lot. I did the three 10 minute walks, or back then I was doing three 10 minute recumbent bike sessions the day after legs. Put a lot of blood in the body, a lot of movement, and that helped keep me healthy. I suffered a couple of injuries. I went to Mark Philippi, and he walked me through rehab. I've just been really a lot more active. Better sleep, a lot better nutrition than most power lifters, and a lot more mobility. I, I still, to this day, I haven't competed in over five years, I still take three 10 minute walks a day. They're brisk, they're aggressive. And now you notice I'm, I'm squatting with no knee wraps or yeah. sleeves. I Very take really good care of my joints. And so I feel really, really healthy, but I have to earn that so that I can do these things in the gym that I enjoy to do. I pay the price outside the gym with all the mobility, the sleep and the good nutrition. I learned that the hard way uh, that you got to take that, go that extra mile yep. if you, you earn soon that right you to be healthy. Off, yes. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Yeah, so absolutely. as soon as you slack off of your outside the gym things, yeah. you go to the gym and get injured. Yeah. If you, work harder than just sit around the rest of the day. You're really not, yep. you're kind of working against yourself. Yep. About a lot of movement. Very good. I ask a lot about cardiovascular fitness, which is hugely important. Helps you with recovery, helps give you stamina and endurance throughout your workouts. So you can do more volume, more sets, more reps, recover faster and, and have more frequency, right? Repeating that workout again three days later and be fully recovered. So they're concerned because I don't prescribe a lot of cardiovascular training. And that's because they're opposing stimulus. Yeah. Your strength training and your hypertrophy training and your distance work are pulling you in two completely different directions. Yeah. So I use the kind of cardiovascular training that won't give the wrong signal. The three 10 minute walks a day, if they're done briskly, elevating your heart rate, it shouldn't be comfortable for you to talk at that pace. That's adequate to give you seven, eight Mets, you know, about equivalent of a 13 minute mile. And then if you need that higher end, 150, 160, 170 beats per minute. Yeah. That happens by shortening the rest periods between uh, while, while doing supersets yeah. in the antagonistic body part. Extension, 30 seconds, curl, 30 seconds, extension, 30 seconds, curl. You can get your heart rate up. Also, we can finish the exercise with an AMRAP, which is what I want to do now. Go back down, throw a bar on our shoulders, lighten the weight, yeah. drop down and deeper into the hole, get a real stretch in the quad, but do 20 reps. Ah. See what your heart rate feels like after that. Absolutely. So that's how I get both without sending the wrong message to the body. Can I ask you, Stan, too, for, for like wrestlers and pro and fighters, conditioning though, is that for me, like I found like doing burpees and things like that, I always do it separate from my weight training. Yep. But it's like, like you said, they, they contradict each other, but in a sport like wrestling or, or fighters, you have to have such high level conditioning. You, you do, know, now let's look at the type of conditioning you yeah. need. People used to make this mistake with football players, even soccer players. They thought they would have to run soccer players long distance. Soccer's alactic. It's five, six second sprints yeah. followed by an extended walk. Yes. Football, same thing. Yeah. Five or six seconds of all out, 30 seconds rest. So you want to train your cardiovascular 
to be able to replicate that kind of, of sport specific demand. And so it can be done with HIT training. HIT training uh, does have, it does build up some systemic fatigue. So you gotta be careful. You gotta use it, you know, sparingly. Sparingly, and, and probably with your, uh, on the same day as your, as your strength training, and give yourself a full day off. If you do a strength training, the next day you do HIT, you're gonna accumulate a lot of fatigue. It's yeah. gonna be hard to recover from that. And I think too, that was my, with wrestling, the demand and, and the schedule of five days a week, you're constantly, Wrestling every single night. It's a, it's a, it's a rare sport that air. During the season, you're yeah. training while you're playing. Yeah. So you don't need to add additional training on top of that. In the off season you, is when you can build some strength and, and, and work on maintaining yes. that cardiovascular fitness. But in season, while you're wrestling, what you're actually doing in the ring should serve as your hit training yeah. and your cardiovascular training. If you add stuff to it outside the ring, then that's gonna be the kind of thing to overload you over time. And that's what happened. Yeah. Heart rate up high, as high as any 50 year old can get their heart rate up. We finished a nice exercise, it's all quad, ton of pump. So, a few things to consider. Lots of times people will start doing high rep sets and they'll stop and pause between reps. Well, pause reps is a little different than straight reps. They're not going to provide you any additional benefit for hypertrophy. And I, I know that you think if you do 20 reps, you're doing better than if you did 15. But if those 20, the last five reps, you sat there and breathed three or four times, yeah. you're kind of resting doing another rep. Which resting. I did a little bit with that. That's fine, it was reasonable. We kept it you know, within our capability of a breath or two. But if you just go straight and you can't do any more reps and you only did 14, yeah. or if you do 12 and then start stopping and breathing real heavy and do the last eight, there's no extra benefit to the 20 over the 14. Because once you get maximal muscle fiber recruitment, You've initiated that hypertrophy response, yes. you know, that, that whatever you need to, to then you know, repair and supercompensate will come as a result of that stimulus. That's one. Same thing's true when people do things like drop sets. You know, we've all done them. Yep. You get on the dumbbell press, incline dumbbell press, and you, you do eight reps, and then you throw them down, and you, you jump down 20 pounds lighter and do four more, 20 pounds lighter, and you do four or six more to finish. That drop set is no more effective than going to failure on the first set of eight. It just isn't. No, the research has sense. looked at groups who have done both and found they had equivalent outcomes. So sometimes more isn't better. Yeah. Uh, the same thing's true when you're doing things like complexes. It's kind of the latest fad. It mostly happens among the female competitors, not to be offending anybody, but they'll do things like, uh, you know, a curl to an overhead press. Well, you can overhead press a hell of a lot more than you can curl. So one of those exercises is not getting maximal muscle fiber recruitment. So it's kind of a wasted effort here. Yeah. If you're not getting a weight that's heavy enough to get you within a rep or two of failure, you're not creating a stimulus that's gonna give you a hypertrophy response. And so try not to pair two exercises into one yeah. if one of them is gonna be, you know, underperforming to what its capability is or it's just not getting the benefit. So three ideas there so you don't put more energy into a workout than you actually get the return out of it, or ROI, return on investment. It's great advice, it's like anything in life too, if you spread yourself too thin, you just pick something and go all out at that one thing. Yeah. Maximize it all the way. Yeah. And like keeping constant tension on the muscles, what you're talking about. Coming up out of the squat though, and resting a few breaths, rather with when you come up and you keep that tension on all the way, expend yourself fully yeah. on that one exercise. When you get to failure, it's failure. Yeah. You've done all the stimulus you can do. 10 reps, doing it the right way is better than yeah. 20 the wrong way. And so then start measuring your rest periods because that's gonna be a pro progressive component that you can change over time. Yes. You start resting three minutes, then you go down to two and a half, then you go down to two. Over time, that's gonna be the kind of, of progression that's gonna give you uh, more results. So you don't have to you don't have to just measure the repetitions. You can measure the total number of sets. You can measure the amount of weight that you lift and you can also measure the rest periods. Yeah. And you can, you can work with all four of those variables, not together, <laughs> don't increase them all every week, but you can work with one or two of them over the course of a six to eight week period and then employ the other two for the next six to eight weeks and do slight variations of the movement from a flat press maybe to 15 degrees, little things like that, but still the basic movements are gonna give you the most muscle growth. I know, I love it, increase the intensity over various, those four different ways. 
yeah. picking and choosing as you're doing it's it. It's hard to continue progressing over time. Yeah. Eventually, you kind of top out on whatever variable you're manipulating at the time. So keep manipulating different variables. This isn't P90X. You don't yeah. come in the gym every day and do something different. <laughs> run around with battle ropes. You're not going to grow that way. Yeah. But create a stimulus. Stick with that over the course of six to eight weeks, progressing it over time, yep. and then change the variable and progress again. So let me ask you this, Stan, too, just for me, because I'm one of the kind of guys, and, and I really believe, like, pro wrestling, there's no off-season. Yeah. And I found, for me, like, when I started doing things like burpees and high-end conditioning, it helped me tremendously in the ring. For somebody that is that sport-specific, if you're a fighter and you're in fighting, they're going to make you do conditioning. One way, what is the best way to do this and to do that together? If you had, if you had to. Well, you have to understand, again, you have that bucket, and when you start pouring stress into that bucket, it all fills in. The heavy stuff, the, the sport-specific training, yeah. the cardiovascular fitness, it all goes into that same bucket. So everything you're gonna have to pull back just a little bit. Yeah. Rather than doing strength training twice a week on squats, you might have to go back to once a week. That's what uh, guys like Kobe would do during yeah. the season. He would only strength train once a week. In the off season, he would strength train two or three times a week. Yeah. So you have to make some adjustments so that the priority is, is, is focused on, which is your actual performance in the, sport, in the, in the yeah. sport. And then behind that, you do what you need to maintain that level of fitness, which could just be one heavy session a week. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily have to be only a squat session. No. You could do a dip chin up superset with a squat uh, RDL superset, be in and out of the gym in 40 minutes, and uh, and be, you know, in tip top shape to do your sport. Go hard, shorten it up. Go hard, do the conditioning, but give yourself proper rest too. You have those rest days, and I think that's something I've learned the hard way is I have to start taking rest. Yeah. Because otherwise, in shortening down what I'm. A lot science, of wasted effort. The science suggests as few as five sets a week can maintain or possibly even give you some gains over time. So you need to be thinking, what's the least I can do while I'm in season to hold on to everything I earned in the off season? Yes. Five sets is that number. And it could be one workout a week. So I know we talked earlier about 10 sets over two workouts, yep. 10 to 20, but that would be an off season gaining program to maintain all your gains and maybe even get some 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 growth yeah if you're feeding it well and you're sleeping well which is the hard thing on the road is yes. the logistics planning your meals and your sleep but with five sets a week so think about that pour everything into those five sets don't make them wasted they should be very demanding Dorian Yates style yes. you know within a rep of failure uh, and that could give you all that you need through the whole season you'd certainly be able to maintain all of your size and strength it makes sense is there anything else today Stan you think we need to do workout wise I, I mean I feel great is I that... feel great too normally I split up uh, quads and hamstrings. Yeah. I'll, in the morning, I'll wake up and I'll do hamstrings. What we didn't do today was a hip flexion movement. We did a knee flexion for hamstrings, yeah. but we didn't do a hip flexion movement, which normally I like to do and get the upper part of the hamstring, the glute. Uh, but we did, we did all of our quad sets, our two top heavy sets, uh, three extensions, finished with our uh, AMRAP. Yeah. So I mean, that's a good quad workout. And then I'll throw calves in with hamstrings too. Yep. And the big thing about calves is, and it was nice of Brandon Allen to buy a seated calf press because I came in here and complained. <laughs> For years and years and years, I've done thousands of standing calf presses, but I have a really high insertion in the small gastroc yeah. muscle, and so it never looked very good. Then I started, I went down and met with Ben Kwiatkowski, and he said, look, soleus is two-thirds of the lower leg mass. If you're not doing seated calf presses, you're not working two-thirds of your calf muscle. Yeah. So I started, I bought a, calf, a seated calf press machine for my garage. And I've been using it ever since. And I've actually started to develop, you know, now I'm in my 50s, I'm still worried about the size of my calves. It's really pathetic. <laughs> That's going to know I'm going to be the same exact yeah, way. Okay. It never ends. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I would sit down and do some seated calf presses uh, in between hamstring okay. sets. I would superset the two of them. That's normally what I would do. So that's good kind deal. of a wrap for today. It was a lot of good work. You know, today's been very valuable for me, and I appreciate you making the time. And I'm, I'm constantly, and I, I stress this to people, like I said, letting go of the ego and keeping an open mind. And the, Once you realize, uh, the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. And uh, putting yourself around the right people, and you're one of the most knowledgeable guys I've come across, so thank you. And staying healthy. Staying healthy. That's the name of the game. Without, yeah. I found out in the hard way, without our help, nothing else really ultimately matters. It, it takes away greatly from everything else. Live to fight another day. Yeah, if absolutely. things aren't feeling right in the gym, search around for some exercises that don't hurt, finish your day, come back again the next time. Yeah. I've been doing it for 30 years. I hope to do it for 30 more years, and I can only do that healthy. Absolutely. And where can everyone find you, Stan? At Stan Efforting. StanEfforting.com is my website. Instagram's at Stan Efforting. YouTube, Stan Efforting.
Good deal. And I can vouch for the vertical diet. It's helped me tremendously. Awesome. Thanks, Thank you brother. very much, sir. Good one. I appreciate it. Feed me more.